Hello, my name is Louis Gilbert and today we are going to be discussing intercultural communication, specifically using manners across cultures. So sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy. Intercultural communication occurs in our lives on a more frequent basis in a modern multicultural Australia. Communicating with individuals from many different corners of the world, such as Africa, Indonesia, Japan, China and many more. Therefore, communicating manners across cultures correctly can take a lot of work. Due to this, one aspect of intercultural communication that we need to widen our education on is using manners across cultures. However, the meaning of thanks, please, varies from culture to culture. Specifically, there are three main elements we need to become educated on in order to improve intercultural communication. Firstly, identifying why manners have no universal system. Secondly, becoming educated on what definition of culture is useful to use in the context of cross-culture manners. And finally, learning what invisible borders exist in other cultures in order to understand what lines we should not cross. Using a personal experience of communicating with a Japanese friend for my analysis. Firstly, growing up in a family of four boys and a single mother, the word thank you was seen as unnecessary in our family. The reason for this is due to growing up in poverty, we cooked, shared money, did favours for one another and washed each other's clothes without a need for any of us to show gratitude. As a result, it was ingrained in our family at a young age that not showing gratitude was a universal cultural element that everyone possessed. However, when I grew up and became an adult, I did not say thank you to my friends and family. On a specific occasion, when I did not say thank you to my Japanese friend, for cooking our food, I ended up hurting my friendship. One of the main reasons why miscommunication like this occurs is simply because it is stated by Jones in 2012 that communication is ambiguous by nature. Specifically, when I say thank you to my friend, it is viewed by him as polite. However, when someone says thank you to me, I view it as unnecessary and sometimes even awkward. Therefore, I argue that communication between cultures should start off with both parties being educated on the fact that communication is ambiguous. Starting from this viewpoint can allow us to analyze each other's cultures logically. Secondly, according to Thompson, culture is a verb. Elaborating on this idea, culture in this context can be seen as the actions we take rather than something one possesses. This clarification is important due to the fact we are living in a super diverse world. It is useful learning what cultural traits to adopt in order to communicate manners correctly. Looking at this a little closer, according to Lewis, possessing knowledge of other cultures' traits will help minimize awkward encounters with other cultures. I argue that it is a basic necessity to know as many different types of manners as possible. Take for example, educating oneself that in parts of South Africa, it is viewed as an insult to say thank you. Or in Japan, slurping food is an expression of appreciation. But in Australia, slurping food is considered rude. Learning as many types of manners out there allows you to adapt quickly to the culture cultural action and use whatever manners are needed at the time. Finally, the way we communicate varies from person to person. As a result, invisible borders are different throughout cultures. A good example of a border is someone's comfort zone. How close do you stand next to someone? Is hugging them accepted or is kissing someone on the cheek correct? Borders are best summed up by this quote. I was not separated from the border. I was the border. Someone can carry a border with them no matter where they go. These borders can be a comfort zone, rules, laws, or social customs. Take, for example, greeting an Australian with a handshake is considered polite. However, greeting an Australian with a kiss on the lips 
is an invisible border that is being crossed and can be seen as rude, shocking and awkward. I argue that becoming educated on as many invisible borders of other cultures allows an individual to know if they are crossing a line. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, uh -huh. but only if you want to.